Pleased to be joined now by Joel Klatt of Fox Sports as the Big Ten announces the return of conference football starting October 23rd and 24th. Joel, kind enough to join us. I know you do commentary on a ton of Big Ten games. What does it mean to have the Big Ten back in the fold for college football? I mean, it's it's positive. It's it's a. I think it's a great day for for college football, um, and more specifically for the young men that that fought for this. You know, and and, and I think that's. Um, what I kept coming back to last weekend, uh, Rev, when I was at Kansas State and I did that Arkansas State-Kansas State game, uh, what what jumped out to me was the fact that when, when we were able to chat with players, whether it was via Zoom or, or distance with masks once we got there, um, it was very apparent, like, th- there is a large, large majority of players that just want the opportunity to play and just want to get out onto the field. And all of the Kansas State players that we talked to and the Arkansas State players that we talked to were not only thankful for the opportunity, but they were really thankful for the powers that be, the administrators, the uh, athletic directors, the coaches, the conference commissioners, the, the medical board that pushed hard for them to have this opportunity. Now, they understand, and I think all of us understand, in particular in this climate, that it's not perfect. And we're having games postponed and here and there. But trying and getting onto the field is better than not trying. And so I think you're seeing that sentiment from the, a lot of the Big Ten players. And, I, and I'm happy for them, in particular, uh, that they're going to get an opportunity to go compete in the sport that they love. And I think it's healthy for them to do so. You mentioned Arkansas State and seeing them. I know they had to postpone their game Coming up this weekend, I know they had a lot of uh, players who were COVID positive who weren't able Mm -hmm. to play in that game. What have they told you about kind of the particular challenges inherent in trying to keep kids healthy here during what is a pandemic? Yeah, I I think that (laughs) two things. One, Rev, is that the, the teams that are back said that the, the return to campus for the regular student population is when it became nearly impossible, but certainly very difficult for the football team and more athletic teams, the athletic department in general, uh, to, to try to keep their um, positivity going, not positive tests, but positivity going as it relates to uh, the way that they were quarantining themselves. So that's number one. Um, I think that that's a really difficult part of this thing. Number two would be that the contact tracing Each school kind of makes their own rules, and right now they're very rigid. So, for instance, at Kansas State, if there's a positive test on the campus, not just within the athletic department, on the campus, and that person then is asked the questions of, who have you come in contact with? Um, It can be briefly, it can be, if they say your name, you're out for 14 days, 14 days. So that, that's that been incredibly difficult for these programs, whether they're having a, a high number of positives or not, is that the contact tracing element is really making it hard for them to field a team practice, so on and so forth. And I think that's why you're seeing a lot of these postponements. Uh, another uh, factor of this is that once you do get a few positives, if you're at one of these teams that is not testing three or more times a week, what you get is you get the spikes and the jumps Uh, rather than catching it early and making sure that it doesn't spread. So those are all the things that that they're dealing with, and I'm sure that the Big Ten will deal with. Although I will say this, Rev, I think that we're going to see from the SEC and probably see from the Big Ten is that the spikes from the regular student population coming back is going to move through the athletic department. And I'm I'm hoping, at least, that we're going to have more uninterrupted play out of the SEC and the Big Ten than what we're seeing right now from the conferences that are trying to play through the return to campus time. And also part of that is daily testing. I mean, you mentioned three days a week, and one of the things that people told me in this interim period between August 11th and today was the big challenge was making sure, bottom line, they didn't want to put people on the field who were COVID positive because contact tracing is borderline impossible in a football game. And then you get to the point where, as you said, you're quarantining huge swaths of people because Everyone comes in contact with everyone on the football field. And again, the daily testing of every time you step on the field, you're going to be tested would seem to alleviate some of that issue. And it was a big part of the Big Ten's presentation today. So I'm guessing that stood out to you. What else stood out to you about what the Big Ten had to say today? Um, I think that was the biggest part, to be honest with you, is, is I think we all realized, Rev, early on in this that that was the biggest hurdle was the medical side, the um, 
uh, the ability to test every day so that you can have some level of comfort, not only as a player, um, but as a coach, that if you're on the field, you're essentially in a bubble because of the everyday testing. I think that that's a, a big piece of this thing. And I also think that the, the further developments and research and uh, medical information as it relates to myocarditis, I, I believe that when that first came up, it was kind of a red flag and everybody froze. And then we needed to learn a little bit more about it, how long it's been around, which certainly it's been around for a long time, how dangerous it is, it, it, dangerous it is, and also how the other conferences are going about the battery of tests as soon as you see a positive COVID test and how you can catch this thing right away and how prevalent it is in some of these other conferences. All of those hurdles, I think, had to get over. And, and ultimately, they landed on something that was comfortable for them to at least move forward for this October 24th date. I will say that I, I do think it was interesting because in the last few days, Rev, I think people have expected, well, we're going to hear an announcement. We're going to hear an announcement. And I do believe that part of this was securing the daily testing. They needed that to be absolutely secure before they, quote unquote, brought it to a vote or made it public. And also they needed to have the votes similar to Congress. You don't bring a bill to the floor if you don't have the votes for it to pass. And I think that was an element of this as well that they needed to make sure that all their ducks were in a row because a no vote now would have been devastating to the conference and certainly the leadership within the conference. Final question for you, Joel. I want you to put your analyst hat on. It's a broad question, and I'm sure you could go on for an hour on this, but give us the, the kind of treetops point of view. How would you handicap the Big Ten race East and West, and I do want to let you know, James Franklin is coming up next, and I think he can hear you, just so you know. I, listen, I, I'm a big fan of what Penn State has. He knows that. I've told him that. I think Penn State uh, has a chance to be a playoff team if they can beat Ohio State. I think you've got to beat the champ in order to be the champ, and right now uh, the champ is is uh, the Ohio State Buckeyes. They certainly return a, a very quality team. Their opt-outs are... I don't want to say devastating, but those are big developments for Ohio State, and we'll see where that goes with Wyatt Davis and Sean Wade. But with Justin Fields back, I think that that offense is going to be very good. The offensive line is very good. I would start with them. Penn State's right there, and if they can beat Ohio State, they certainly have a chance to not only win the Big Ten, but uh, but potentially go to the playoff. And then, it, you know, in the West, Rev, I think it's – Wait and see, I think it's the best way to put it. I still love Wisconsin and their culture. I know they're dealing with a lot of positive tests right now, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, the West is a bit wild at that point. And, and for my money, uh, I stick with Penn State and Ohio State as the class of the league this year. Joel, words cannot express how happy I am to talk about Big Ten football <laughs> with you. Really, I know. really excited to, oh, to have this no back. Doubt. Thanks for I appreciate time. you, Rev. You've, you've been really, really good. You, you know, pressing the right buttons, the right questions, pushing back when needed. You've been, you've been excellent during this time. So I appreciate you very much. Very nice of you to say. Thanks a lot, Joel. Look forward to working with you as we talk Big Ten football this year. Joel Klatt of Fox Sports. You can see him on Houston and Baylor coming up this weekend. 